presentation, I'd like to welcome Gil Berman and Brian Ta, SEO project manager and software engineer for Airbnb, here to tell us about how to, uh, or how they uh, amped or amping up Airbnb. Gentlemen, please. All right. Thank you, Chris. Let's click the next. Hello, uh, my name is Gil Berman. I'm a software engineer for Airbnb, and for two years I was on the SEO team. For the last uh, about six months, we've been working to, uh, on AMP. Uh, hi, my name is Brian. Oh, I'm a lot louder than you are. Uh, I'm the SEO project manager at Airbnb, and for the last six months I've been working really closely with Gil, and it's been kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. It's been terrible. Let's go, part one, Airbnb. So does everybody here know what Airbnb is? Ah, oh, great, who works at TripAdvisor here? Nobody? Oh, even better, I can tell you more secrets. Uh, so Airbnb, if you guys are not aware, we are a home sharing platform, so anybody can go ahead and rent out their room or you can book a room. And the advantage with this, it's a little bit, it feels a lot more closer than a hotel, and we really allow you to live in the area that you want to go in, so let's say Barcelona, and feel like a local. So you know, if you ever want to go on a business trip and feel as if you belong in Boston, for example, uh, check us out. But before we move on, uh, we are going to be using a little bit of slang. Um, these are some internal Airbnb words that uh, I want to make sure that everybody's aware of. So the first one is our homepage. So our homepage we actually call P1. Uh, that's the first click. Uh, and then our search result page we call P2. And our listing page we call P3. So P1, P2, P3. It's just a user journey, homepage, search result page, listing page. And let's get to the actual meat of our presentation, AMP. Um, so AMP, as many of you know, stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. So we have to ask ourselves, <laughs> what is AMP? And Gil, can you please show us what AMP is? If you look here and you Google Airbnb Berlin, what do you get? You scroll a little bit down, you see this cool Thunderbolt icon, you click on it and it loads instantly. What AMP is, is AMP is a way for you to design your pages to so provide a very fast, very performant experience and load almost instantaneously. So AMP is not available on desktop. It's only available on mobile devices. You want to talk to my speaker? Oh, they can't hear me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't really have to out. Uh, so, as you can see, if you have an AMP page, the Google result for the desktop page looks exactly the same. But if you have an AMP result, then it looks almost the same, except it has the addition of the AMP logo, which is a circle with the, uh, what do you call that thing? Lightning bolt? Lightning bolt, there you go. All right, so to actually create an AMP page, you do need two uh, separate URLs. So in our case, we have airbnb.com slash s slash sf. And that would be the if you uh, searched for Airbnb San Francisco. So the AMP version of the page is the same URL with AMP in front of it. Um, and the user journey is is norm what you'd expect if you're not on mobile. They just get that the s slash sf page. But if you are on mobile, then you're actually getting a Google CD and cache version of that page. And to top it all off, the really nice thing about AMP is not only does it run a, a, a very fast version of JavaScript, and not only does Google serve from the CDN, once you go and Google, or once Google loads, loads the search result page, it actually starts preloading the AMP results. So you get a very, very good benefit of just like all these very, very performant factors all coalescing into one very, very fast experience. So now that we've decided, or us being uh, Airbnb decided that we wanted to try and pursue AMP, we have to ask ourselves, what pages should we AMP? And before we can ask ourselves that, we need to figure out which factors matter the most. So the very first one that we looked at is impactfulness, traffic. It's not only bringing in a large amount of traffic, it's about bringing in high quality traffic. We want to bring in traffic that's actually going to lead to bookings. The second one is page volatility. So at Airbnb, code changes go out every 30 to 45 minutes. So every 30 to 45 minutes, you are seeing a new version of the website. Um, so if the page changes way too much, we're gonna start running issues with AMP validation. That's not something that we want to deal with. Technical challenges. How difficult will it be to AMP the page that we decide to AMP? And page ownership, does our team own the page or does another team in the company own the page? If we own it, it's easier to AMP. <clears throat> uh, 
So when we were looking at pages, the very first page that we actually looked at were our guidebook pages. These occupy the keyword space, things to do in blank. So things to do in San Francisco or things to do in LA. Now the great thing about these pages is that the SU team actually owns these pages. We created these pages from the ground up built for SEO. So, and the design is very, very stable and no one is actively working on it. On the downside, it gets an okay amount of traffic, um, but the problem is that the, the traffic that it brings in is very, very low impact. Bringing in this traffic isn't actually gonna the only, the only it's, it will boost up traffic as a vanity metric and not actually push up any core metrics that matter at the end of the day. So for this reason, we decided not to go with our guidebook pages. Next, we considered the home page, P1. This page gets a ton of traffic. Um, unfortunately, it changes extremely quickly. Um, and for that reason, we decided not to go with our home page. The next page is our listing pages. So these pages, so we actually started working these pages for two weeks. Um, the great thing about the page is that not very, like only one other team owns a page, so it would be really easy to work with them. Um, and the other great thing is that the conversion rate is super low. So if we amp these pages, we can boost the conversion rate. That will really help the help our metrics at the end of the day. Um, but the big problem is just that these pages are built on a legacy system and they're just not very compatible for us in order to bring AMP to these pages. So for that reason, we also decided these pages aren't the pages to AMP up. So finally, we decided to AMP P2, our search results page. Um, this page also gets a ton of traffic. Uh, it also changes quite quickly, but we decided that this was the best thing to go ahead and try to AMP. So this is just a quick look at uh, traffic the first page that we mentioned, Guidebook, it's also called Things to Do. It um, would have been technically the easiest thing to AMP, but you can see it only gets 1% of traffic. So we decided it wouldn't be high impact enough. So now that we figured out what pages to do, what's the minimal viable product that we, that we need to create in order for us to actually finish the product and actually experiment it and launch it? So these are some questions that we, actually, we had to ask ourselves. Uh, how does AMP work within our existing framework? How does AMPing P2 interfere with our website infrastructure? What does AMPing P2 do to the workflow of other developers in the company? How does this impact design experience and the overall product? So these are issues, we decided to procrastinate on certain issues that we would only address these after we had a minimal viable project, product that proved itself. Like how do we integrate AMP as a product with the rest of the company? How do we handle the added complexity? Although we didn't really want to handle this, we actually did end up um, addressing some of this with, uh, by creating unit tests, tests for AMP validation. Uh, and the reason we did that is because along the way, our work kept getting broken by other, other engineers. So we had to introduce the tests in order to prevent that from happening. How do we get buy-in from other teams? How do we integrate AMP into our experimentation framework? And last of all, like who is actually going to maintain AMP once we finish the product? We're going to like obviously we're going to introduce a lot of like code changes and pipelines. Someone needs to ma maintain the product after we're done creating the minimal viable product, and after even after we launch it. So now we're going to talk about uh, unforeseen problems that we ran into along the way. The first big one. This is one of our biggest problems, and it hasn't been fully solved. Uh, is server-side rendering timing out. Our P2, our canonical page, times out uh, under 4% under of the time. But our AMP page was timing out four to five times percent as often. So what happens is that uh, Google is hitting this page constantly and it's caching the page. So normally if the page doesn't time out, it, it renders the page as you can see on the left side. But if the page times out, then all Google sees is a blank page. Now. Normally, from a user perspective, this wouldn't be too bad because Google would just instead, in the search results, default back to the canonical page. Unfortunately, we ended up getting this experience, which was a Google bug. So in order to solve this, solve this problem of Google, like, so if you clicked on the, the search engine result page, it, was, it would actually show, show the Google bug, which is a very, very suboptimal experience for any of our users. So what we had to do was a somewhat hacky temporary solution in which we, would, we implemented CDN caching on our AMP pages. So Google would continually request our AMP pages, and the first time that it actually gets a, 
it, it gets a successful render, we CD and cache that result for the next 30 minutes. That means the next 30 minutes, whenever AMP or whenever the Google AMP uh, crawler hits those pages, it would go ahead and just continue getting those CD, those CD and cached pages. So doing this, we actually dropped our, our timer from 16% pretty much to 0%. There might be a couple of instances where it would time out during the, the brief 30 minute intervals um, when the CD and cache expires, but that's pretty much negligible. And actually a fun little story is that um, when we first encountered this bug, we actually, we talked to our Google, it was like, hey, like this is broken, you guys need to fix it. And they actually wouldn't fix it for us. So like, you get, we, we can't give you preferential treatment just for one company. So they had to go and work with, the, like they went and worked with their other partners in order to find that this bug was occurring to other companies and not just us. So a lot of people say that Google tries not to, or Google is evil. I guess in this case, they were a lot nicer about making sure that they weren't giving too much preference treatment to one, one company. I kind of disagree with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this conversation a lot, Gil. I feel like they should just fix a bug if, if they find it. <laughs> okay, so um, another obstacle is that new features would break AMP. Here's a list of, of some things that we ran into, and there's a lot of ways to break AMP. But one way is you introduce a single image tag into your page, that will break AMP validation. Going down to the bottom, if you add features to your page and the amount of CSS totals more than 50 kilobytes, that will also break AMP validation. And finally, um, you could add a feature that doesn't break AMP, AMP validation, but it would provide a bad user experience in the AMP context. An example that happened to us is that we had a horizontally scrolling container which had images in it. When the user saw that container, it looked fine, but once they scrolled over, the images wouldn't load because of the way AMP works. And this is actually another uh, example of a very broken experience where all you can see is our header and you don't see any content. So now we're gonna talk about architecture solutions. Um, and our approach was that we wanted to be able to use as much of our existing component framework and make it work for AMP. So why did this require changes? Well, first of all, security. AMP is displayed inside of an iframe on google.com. And for that reason, we can't have custom JavaScript and we can't have inline styles. It's also designed for, uh, for performance from the ground up. And it tries to eliminate layout reflows and limit the amount of CSS that you can have. So specific to our case, AMP doesn't support important. We use an open source framework called Aphrodite, which is, we use with React, and it adds important to every style. AMP doesn't support inline styles. With React, it's pretty common to use inline styles. AMP only supports style tags that appear in the head of the document, and Aphrodite inserts them in the body. And finally, the 50, 50 kilobyte limit. We kept bumping into this limit. So first of all, important. This is how we uh, generate styles. Um, you see a function called CSS, it's provided by Aphrodite, and the first argument is the style definition. And that results in markup that looks like this. So to tackle this, we added a, a node environment variable for AMP, and when that variable is turned on, we, cre we created a custom CSS function which disables uh, important altogether. Next, inline styles. So we could convert inline styles using an Aphrodite method called uh, themestylesheet.create. Unfortunately, it's too slow. So this was our solution. We memoized the styles. So first we created a cache key from uh, the, the style definition itself using json.stringify. We update, update the cache and this is what the usage looks like. Next, how did we get the styles inside of the head? So this is how uh, our server-side rendering works. We use a service called Aphrodite. Um, it's an open source um, library that's available on GitHub. And how it works is the user makes a page request. Rails renders an ERB template. That ERB template may call render react component. And when it does, Hypernova handles, handles that call and sends back markup. So this is what the ERB template looks like. Inside of it is a call to render React component. That inserts the styles. Unfortunately, we can't get the styles back into the head. 
So our solution to this was to replace the entire ERB template with an ERB template that only calls React, render React component. And it completely sends uh, the entire page rendering to Hypernova instead of using Rails. And this is available as an open source project called Hypernova Ant. So the 50 kilobyte CSS limit. We took two approaches. First of all, is it possible to remove styles? Are there extra styles? It turns out that Aphrodite, since it's generating styles dynamically, all of them are actually being used on the page. However, we noticed that since AMP only is available on mobile, uh, we could eliminate the responsive styles that were above our median breakpoint at 744 pixels. So we modified the CSS function to eliminate responsive styles. Any styles that are below the responsive breakpoint were inserted without their media query. That was a small, was a small difference. And any styles that were above the responsive breakpoint were just removed altogether. That made a bigger difference. Then we did class minification. Before our classes looked like this. Afterwards, they looked like this. And we added this as a feature to Aphrodite. It's available, it's open source. So with all of the technical issues that we had with AMP, we ran into almost as many product issues. Uh, so one of the first product issues that we ran into was just user flows. User flows for AMP, they work very well for a first time visitor or a first time logged out visitor, key emphasis on logged out. <clears throat> Uh, Logging users, are, but users are returning users that are that have previously logged in are dropped to a very very confusing experience. At Airbnb, if you're logged in, you've pre or you have previously been on the website, you get a customized experience. We show you certain homes, certain listings, certain experiences that we think may may fit for your needs. Or, but if you're but if you come in from AMP and you come into a logged out experience, all of a sudden the experience doesn't make a ton of sense anymore. You can't you can't check any messages. You can't check past trips. Um, nothing really works the way that we that we really really intended to. So how do so we were faced with the question: How do we present a technically technically logged in experience for AMP? And we actually were never able to solve this issue. Another issue that we ran into was deep linking. And for those of you that don't know, um, if you have the Airbnb app installed on your phone and you open and you Google like Airbnb San Francisco and you click on the Airbnb search result, it will automatically open up the native app. Well, AMP overrides this feature. So instead of opening up the native app, all of a sudden you, you have to perform one more click in order to actually get to the native app. And while at Airbnb, we are very, very proud of our mobile web experience, the best experience at Airbnb, for Airbnb and mobile is our native app. So this issue is actually very, very polarizing. Some teams are okay with it, and, and other teams are very, very unhappy with this, with this feature. Um, another thing is, AMP makes it very, very difficult for you to quickly iterate on the product. Um, and Airbnb experimentation is very, very, is, like I think every company says that experimentation is very key, but at Airbnb this is especially so. And with AMP, since, it's being, since it lives on another domain, we can't drop cookies, we can't bucket users correctly, we cannot adequately experiment as much as we want to. And last, of, and last but not least is stability. So while me and Gil were iterating on this product and trying to make it come forth, and we, while we were running experiments, pages broke almost oh, at least once a week where pages started breaking, like pages were blank, or users were, or developers would accidentally introduce like an image tag and break the entire experience. And while we did have a lot of unit tests, we did run into an issue where like sometimes pe like developers would create like a new feature on the page, and they were AMP valid. So that means that they appear in the AMP page, but it doesn't make any sense because it completely breaks the AMP experience. This isn't the experience that we want to, we want to present on mobile. Um, so for, on that end, stability was a huge issue. So at the end of all this, what did we actually learn from AMP while we were working on it? Um, communicating with teams outside of ours was very, very challenging, especially on a page like P2, where you have more than 30 different teams working, iterating, and trying to like modify and create the best product possible. All of a sudden, like, like how do you communicate with 30 different teams that don't add an image tag or, or, or it's gonna break? But on the plus side, Gil overcame a lot of technical hurdles that at first seemed pretty impossible to actually overcome. The 50 kilobyte limit or the timeout issue, I remember when Gil came to talk to me about it, I thought like, it would be impossible for us to solve. Um, and as a whole, the experience just feels fractured. Um, a lot of this just has to deal with the fact that AMP 
works really well for a, for a first time visitor or a logged out experience. And for P2, where P2 is fundamentally a logged in experience, it, 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 it doesn't really work. So how do we go and actually wrangle all these problems and pack them into what and just like kick it out with like one blow? Uh, to do this, we gotta dial back a little bit to when we first started working on AMP. When we first started working on AMP, we started a side project, um, a new product called Magic Carpet. Magic Carpet is our landing page system. Um, and, with Mag and Magic Carpet, we specifically created a page that was tailored to uh, people coming from search engines and for first time visitors. Um, so at its core, Magic Carpet is actually very, very similar to P2. We actually have the same exact content. You can see on the left and the right, the results are the same. The only difference is we create a very, very obvious call to action that tells users exactly what they should do when they enter the page. People coming into P2 don't know, like if, if, if it's your first time coming to our P2, all of a sudden the experience doesn't make, doesn't make very much sense. Like if you don't know what to expect from Airbnb and you just see a list of houses, like what are you supposed to do here? So what do we clean up? Like I said before, we clean up the use flow. Now users know exactly what they should do. People know that the minute they come into our P2, hey, I need to go put in the city that, I'm, that I want to be looking uh, for a listing for as well as the dates. Uh, we limited the exposure to a very, very narrow scope, first time visitors and people coming from search engines. And we focus on product design now that we know exactly who to target, first time visitors, again. And all, and all of this led to a very, very polished experience and, a, and most importantly, a logged out experience. So we went ahead and tested this with, with our experimentation framework and we increased bookings coming from SEO by 6%. Um, so as a whole, Magic Carpet was a very, very successful experiment that we did and we decided to launch it 100%. But now we have the perfect vehicle for us to actually create and for us to deliver AMP to our broader site. Now this is a page that the SEO team, this is a state of the page that the SEO team owns and now we are able to AMP the page without having to worry about any of the stability issues. We don't run into the user flow problems as well. So what's next? Service workers. Um, Service workers aren't necessarily SEO related. So really quickly, what is it? Uh, it's, it sits between a page and, sorry, it, sit, it sits between uh, a, your, your web browser and, and the network. And on the first page request, it'll cache the request. On subsequent page requests, it'll pull from cache and it feels like a native experience because you'll instantly see at least part of the page. So how does that work within the AMP experience? First of all, the user arrives on Google search results. Now, while they're looking at the search results, Google is pre-rendering um, AMP results in the background. As soon as the user clicks on an AMP result, it instantly shows because it's already been pre-rendered. Now, while the Google is looking at that, the service worker is being installed. And finally, when they click on a link in the AMP page, they also get an instant experience. In our, in our case, they get what we call the app shell, which is uh, our header. And then at this point, all we have to look are the results. So why is this important? Because AMP provides the only user journey that pre-installs the service worker. In every other case, service worker only provides value as the result of a repeat <coughs> visit. This is huge because now a user can have an app-like experience on the web. So what's next for us? Uh, we still need to figure out experimentation. Uh, experimentation on AMP isn't easy, and we're definitely running a lot of issues with that. Uh, we need to prep for a worldwide launch. Uh, we, the product is ready, the technical challenges are ready, so we, so we do need to launch our experiment. Once you get positive results, we'll roll it out worldwide. And uh, we, one of the big things, if anybody here is going to go and uh, <laughs> implement AMP, is that you need to make sure that your metrics are actually getting logged into your core data. Uh, that's a lot of weird words. What this actually means is if a user comes in from an AMP page, goes to a P2, goes to a P3, and ends up booking, that as a state that it currently is, that booking is attributed to direct. It's not attributed to SEO. That was, like, that's on us. We forgot that we actually need to attribute things correctly. So, uh, seems super obvious, and for nine months that we were working on it, uh, we didn't even think about that until right before launch. Go figure. 
And what didn't we talk about? Uh, quite a lot of things. <laughs> uh, we chose not to talk about any of the experiment results. Uh, this is for obvious proprietary reasons. We can't be giving out that information just yet, especially since somebody told me TripAdvisor is here, so definitely not around here. <laughs> hmm. I thought we weren't talking about it because we didn't have solid data. Yeah, that. that too. We have like we have some. <laughs> for the record, we have some, but find me after the conference. I can talk to you about it then, as long as you don't work for one of our competitors. Uh, we had ran into a ton of logging issues. Uh, logging is very very difficult with AMP, uh, and it, we had one full time engineer actually work on just the logging problem and experimentation issues. Uh, things break on AMP, AMP validation fails. Everybody knows this. Uh, you, you keep getting broken white pages. It happens all the time. And we had to keep on shutting down and restarting experiments because things just weren't working. And we have so many cases of this that if we showed them all to you, it would take up another 30 minutes. Anyways, thank you. Uh, if you need to reach me, there's my email. And there's Gil's email. Yeah. Uh, we need questions? Any questions? <laughs> yes, we are. Email me. <laughs> We're hiring. Any other questions? Are you hoping and expecting to figure out the logged in problem or the uh, deep linking problem, or is this acceptable and kind of a. So, the deep linking problem, we don't have a choice. That's something Google forces on us. If you like, if your team, if you're, if you work in house and your and the team has a problem with it, that's something you'll need to sort with them. Uh, for the login issue, my recommendation is figure out a way to amp up pages that don't have a login experience. That's why we chose Magic Carpet. Uh, the login, like if if you have a login experience, amp doesn't work. Pick a page that doesn't have a login experience. I don't know that Google is really a hundred percent. You know, uh, not going to change their mind on that. If enough people have a problem with that, maybe they'll, they'll you know, budge. Who knows? Any other questions? All right. Thank you.